LS's motors are kind of weird. It kind of bothered me at first, the first motor that I built. What's characterly correct for most people is that there's numbers on the outside of this and people are able to take a timing gun and shoot down and see the timing from the distributor to the crank. And that timing is top dead center. We got the rolling joke about top dead center. Go back to that. Um, this references piston number one or any of the pistons top dead center. When this is rotated, which is rotating your crank, it sends your piston, your slug, all the way up to the top of the cylinder, which reaches top dead center. That would be, if we look down here, right there, top dead center, or zero degrees. In order for this to reference, or reference is a big word, being in the same place, mm -hmm. they use this keyway to slot this. So the keyway essentially keeps that reference number or the TDC marking accurate. Accurate. Now I'm gonna throw you guys all for a whirl. LS motors don't have timing marks. LS motors don't have keyways. Only aftermarket cranks and aftermarket pulleys have keyways. So like if you were to go to your stock uh, 2010 LS motor and pull the, the pulley off, it has no keyway and the crank has no keyway. It's, it's probably bothering all you guys about TDC and how they find TDC. They don't care. They don't care about TDC because right here is a cam position sensor and this motor actually has two. It has one here on the front cam and it has one on the back it has a cam sensor too. As well as on the side back here it has a sensor that locates the crank. So that sensor actually knows when the motor is at top dead center. Those two sensors send that information to the computer and the computer does its algorithm, algorithm and that's how it sends spark and fuel injection to the motor. Where in the old school days you had a distributor and the distributor spun the spark around and that sent to the spark plug and all that's gone. So again, in the new motors, they don't need, or nor do they care about any of these marks. So why are you adding it retroactively? Okay, so now we're going from good to better. Uh, LS motor's great, I'm not gonna lie, it's a great platform. When you build a motor, and you're gonna add power adders, boost, nitrous, turbos. I mean, if you're gonna spit down the intake. Whatever additors you're gonna add, you're gonna to need to reference timing. And timing and fuel control are probably the two most messed with parts of your programming. So when you have your tuners come in and they're tuning your car, they're messing with a timing curve and a fuel you know, enrichment. That's the two things that they mainly mess with, the two parameters that they're playing the most with to get the power out of your motor. Phasing is a problem with any motor. And if you think about phasing, it's like having two things parallel with each other. Phasing, meaning the same, the same phase. The computer sometimes references the phasing of the crankshaft wrong. Meaning, again, the world's not perfect and nothing in this world's perfect. Even if the computer can make inaccurate you know, measurements or decisions. So in the program itself, you can change, uh, how do I describe this? You can change how it's reading the sensor so you can manipulate that sensor to read correctly. Does, did I say that? Did that make any sense at all, Brandon? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so what you would do on a high performance motor, this is not just your normal LS motor, a motor that you're gonna add power adders to or you're gonna turn up the timing and turn up the fuel. You're gonna have your crank keyweighed so it's referenced for top dead center. You're gonna put your crank on so that you can actually take a timing gun, grab number one spark plug wire and shoot it and see referencing between what the motor is actually doing to what the computer's telling it to do. Because if you're just going by that computer screen and it's telling you the timing, like if you moved up to 21 degrees or you've moved up to 22 degrees, let's just say, on your computer it's 22 degrees, but you hit your light, it's 17 degrees. There's a five degree differential right there. So in your brain, you're telling yourself, oh, I can't tell the computer to go over 28 degrees of timing because it'll melt my motor. 
Well, in fact, you're not at 28 degrees of timing. You're at 25 degrees of timing because of the differential in the sensors. So you're adding this, the markings and the keyhole is for redundancy and it's so that you can manually check the, the information on the computer. I can't even distress that enough. Airplanes have the biggest redundancy. They'll have three gauges that do the same thing. And that is what it is. You're just can, checking the consistency of the information given back to you. I have a hard time getting up on the electric uh, gauges. I just put the new Holly Dash in my car. I love it. And I don't have any other gauge than the Holly Dash. The only problem is, is like I've given up the manual feel of life. I almost want to still have a manual water temp gauge that doesn't even turn on with the car. It's just like the probe style that, you know, that goes up and down without any power. Just to reassure that what I'm reading off of my dash is the manual temperature of the motor. And then the kicker that I've always got away from is oil pressure. I ever never really wanted to know what oil pressure the motor was running at. I just have an oil pressure light. And if it goes under, I want to say 14 pounds, my light turns on. Well, over the course of this last motor, I kind of want to now actually see exact oil pressure. And is the oil pressure that my electronics reading, the actual manual oil pressure? So me personally, and I do believe in this car too, there's manual oil pressure gauge and a manual water temperature gauge. And we'll be hooking those up just to reference back to what the computer is saying. Because if you have a differential, a good example of this is temperatures. Um, a manual temperature gauge may read it saying it's 180 degrees, where your computer is saying it's reading 200 degrees. Well, it starts taking fuel and timing out as the temperatures go up because it's trying to save the motor. That inaccuracy could cost you horsepower. So that's where the tuning comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, again, redundancy, back to what Brandon said. Making sure that whatever information you're getting is correct and then it's rechecking it. All right, let's get this thing mounted.